The overcrowded commuter train set off from the half-empty platform with a farewell beep. The passengers quickly went away. Only the lonely figure of an elderly woman remained standing on a completely empty half-station in a fine autumn rain. She looked quite gracile at her age of 65 and didn't lose the beauty of her aristocratic face. The woman was in no hurry to open her umbrella. She decided that she would no longer be in a hurry for a single second. She let cold drops to fall down her pale face, proudly straightened herself and strode towards the exit. Easily going down the steps, which led to the village road, she plucked a rowan branch with a scattering of scarlet berries. Slowly she ran the bunch over her lips and walked to the bus. Mrs. Eldridge's mood was as dreary as the hopelessness of this autumn day. She was on her way to meet her doom, no, not today or tomorrow, but the woman knew for sure that the newly purchased new house would be her last refugee, and the irreparable could happen very, very soon. Tired of endless hospital treatment, she asked the children to sell her apartment and buy a house in a wild and quiet place. Her son and daughter started arguing with her, but faced complete detachment and stepped back. They realized that the mother was resigned to what was happening. She herself came to a decision how to spend the rest of her life, and she had every right. The son, Michael, decided to see about the estate issue and successfully sold Mr. Eldridge's large three-room apartment in the city center and bought a nice little house with a small front garden far enough from the city. Today she went to receive documents for the property, transferred her patient and made a will with a notary. Despite the tragedy of the situation, the woman didn't feel despair. There was a bright sadness in her soul. But I live out my life in nature, as I always wanted. It's a good thing that I've got some time at least. Thank God. She touched her gold next to skin cross unknowingly. But it could be worse. Through the rain-drenched window of the bus, the woman saw two noticeable birch trees and asked the driver to stop. In a few minutes, she was already opening the beautiful wrought iron gate of her new house. Squeezed in from both sides by solid mansions, the low brick building seemed really tiny. This was a kind of doll house with a doll garden, in which there were only five rose bushes, three young apple trees and two birch trees. But there was a real fireplace in the only room inside the house. The kitchenette was located on a glazed veranda overlooking the country yard, which also served as a dining room. Throwing off her shoes in a two-meter hallway, Mrs. Eldridge walked barefoot in the room, sank into her armchair, and thought, Well, I've escaped from the city, and what I'm going to do there? Thought the woman with a slight discomfort, and looked out the window. Well, I'll simply leave. I'll start drawing and grow flowers but only on the windowsill. The room became chilly, and the woman admired the beautiful fireplace. She went to the stove and tried to put one of the logs lying nearby into the firebox. However, the log didn't want to fit anyway. The son Michael lighted the fireplace the day before, but now was absolutely clean inside. Mrs. Eldridge clearly remembered how she personally shoveled the ash. The woman toyed with her chin and leaned over the fire hole, and then the next events happened with lightning speed. A spread clawed paw grabbed the woman's cheek. The woman fell on her side and screamed sheerly with the feeling of pain and shock. Dirty, grey, fluffy creature flew out of the fireplace like lightning and, scattering the ash, started rushing about the room. Leaving a dirty footprint, the beast rushed up the pale pink curtain, it swayed on the cornice and fell down with it. 
scared of a woman's quill, it jumped onto a picture on the wall. Then it knocked her and, unable to resist, flopped to the floor, accidentally hitting the floor lamp. Dumbfounded, Mrs. Eldridge reached for the nearest log, raised it above her head and yelled with all her force, Shoo! The beast laid back its ears and in two large leaps ran out into the garden through the open window on the veranda. The woman sat on the floor for a minute and then rose slowly. She felt like a heart attack was about to happen. So she barely made it to the kitchen and took the medicine. The woman waited for the effect and went to the open window. She looked around the front garden with no hope to see anyone there. A huge fat cat of a weird reddish gray color sat with his back to her. Hiding under a wet rose bush, he got wet too. Mrs. Eldridge looked around the trashed room, rubbed her scratched cheek and frowned. It seemed that not all of the former owners had moved out. She sat down at the table and rested her cheek with her hand. No, no pets in the house, Mrs. Eldridge convinced herself. They live hair, odor, and the kind of things. She looked with aching heart at the cornice which hung from the nail. She put the cat on and looked out the window again. The cat was completely drenched and was sitting even more tragically. Poor cat. They left it as it was an unnecessary thing. The woman put on rubber boots and went out into the porch. Hey, fat, don't be angry. The cat got up and trudged to the gate, barely moving his paws. He walked as slowly as if it were dragging himself by the collar. Mrs. Eldridge easily outran him and got on the path. Okay, stay here. She tensely gazed at the path with his head droop. But keep in mind, I'm the mistress, and I don't let you to tear up. The beast glazed at her with the bad fire in its huge orange eyes, turned and trotted merely towards the open door. Oh, you scoundrel! Following the cat, Mrs. Eldridge realized that it was just peeling on the agony, and she had to struggle for the role of mistress. At noon... The woman was awakened by the sound of broken glass and the clang of iron that had crashed from a hate. Jumping out the kitchen, she was astonished. She saw some white fragments of her favorite cup on the floor and a kettle rolling from the side to side next to it. The water, like a cold puddle, crept up to her bare feet. You hood. The woman grabbed the towel and swung at the pad. The cat threw the mouse which it caught at her feet and flew out the window on its usual jump. Mrs. Eldridge opened the refrigerator and looked at the empty shelves. Okay, I'm sold. I really need some food, now it's time to go shopping. On her way to the gate, she looked cross-eyed and saw the impudent creature sitting under a rose bush. I'll sort you, the woman started complaining but stopped short when she saw its malicious grin. Half an hour later, she diligently stuffed a week's supply of food into packages. She thought for a while and asked for another bottle of milk. As she was approaching to the door, the woman heard a polite voice behind her back. Hello, neighbor. My name's Robert. My land is adjacent to yours. Let me ask you, how long do you plan to stay here? I don't know. Mrs. Eldridge, for some reason, didn't like the man at once. Would you mind to sell me your tear down? I'll set a good price. He perked up. No, the woman pursed her lips. I'm staying here to the end, and after that you can speak to my kids. Well, well, the man twisted his mouth. Then... I wish you good health. Mrs. Eldridge was wrapped to the depth of her soul by his ugly grin. The woman, who had been pondering an unpleasant conversation with her neighbor all day, 
felt completely unwell towards evening. She took her medicine and calmed down a bit. She took out a volume of her beloved Moem and, and got into reading. The cat rumbled loudly in a chair after feasting on some pork sausages and fresh milk. Mrs. Eldridge looked at this sweet view with a smile, rubbed her tired eyes and turned off the light. Long after midnight, she had a nightmare. In her dream, she was pursued by the man in black and ran down the dark alley on the last leg. Her heart was beating in an uncontrollable rhythm somewhere in the throat. Sharp pain filled her chest. There remained only a step to the illuminated street. She saw a shrill light of the lanterns when the stranger grabbed her piled on her and began to choke her. The horror gripped her throat like a cold ring. The woman barely opened her eyes and met the amber gaze of the cat. Sitting on her chest, it moved in an intricate dance, as if sharpening claws on a thin shirt. Fat, go away, you're heavy, Mrs. Eldridge said in a choked whisper, but suddenly she felt that the pain was subsiding. The heart began to beat more evenly, the suffocation receded. Feeling extraordinary lightness, she closed her eyes and fell into a sweet, light sleep. When the granny woke up that noon, she felt almost healthy. She tried to feed fat for several times, but the cat slept and showed no signs of life. Only in the evening, when she was sitting on the porch during the last warm Autumn evening, the pet came out and buried its fluffy head in her lap. Are you my garden angel? The woman looked seriously into the eyes of the cat. It rubbed itself against the mistress and led her to the refrigerator. After three months of so-called catish therapy, Mrs. Eldridge stopped taking the medicine because the heart attacks didn't recur. She explained this to herself by the miracle of the Lord. She sincerely did not understand how an ordinary cat could cope with an ailment which the best doctors of the country were unable to cure. The day before her son came to visit, Mrs. Eldridge asked him to find the former owners of the house farewell. They could have just lost the cat when they moved, because it loved to leave the mistress for a while. Early December twilight fell on the village. The woman kissed Michael on the cheek, quickly blessed him, and hurried into the house away from the chilly street. Or a sad sack. I had to light the fireplace much earlier, but chatted with the sun and completely forgot. She put a pile of wood blocks in the firebox and struck a long match. After reading a little before bed, the woman fell asleep easily. She dreamt that she was slowly falling into a deep well while squinting at the golden light pouring from a height. Suddenly, the light was blocked by a huge cat's head. A terrible greeny muzzle appeared in front of her eyes and sharp claws began to tear the chest in a cambric shirt. Awakened by a loud cat scream, Mrs. Eldridge barely opened her eyes and coughed. The room was filled with acrid yellow smoke. Instinctively, covering her nose and mouth with the blanket, she wandered towards the door, urged on by the cat clawing at her legs. The woman opened the door and leaned over the barrier, trying to catch her breath. The cat let out a gurgling wheeze and beat her in her cough. The granny quickly reached the gate as if she had been whipped up, opened it and went limp, but the sonorous voice of the young man made the woman come to her senses. Ma'am, are you okay? Ben, call an ambulance, be quick. Young neighbors who were late in the city bent over her sympathetically. Three days later, Mrs. Eldridge was taken from intensive care to the ward where her children were waiting to take care of her. 
the daughter was sobbing on her chest and the son was pacing the small one bed ward with nervous steps. Mom, please, go back to the city. You may live with me or Michael if you want. Emily's lips trembled desperately. Or a mad desire to live in a God's forgotten place. I like my house. This was an accident that could happen to anyone. Michael suddenly stared at his mother. I installed central heating. Promise you won't light the stove again. I promise. Have anyone fed the cat? The woman looked inquiringly at her children with aloof expressions on their faces. Michael got up and hit the wall with his fist. I buried him under a rose bush. Please don't cry. The son touched her mother's hand slightly. Mrs. Eldridge stared blankly out the window. The feeling of the overwhelming loss settled in her soul like a heavy burden. Probably we are to tell about these to its owners. Have you found them? She stared at her son with her watery light eyes. He nodded. Believe it or not, they never had animals. Their little daughter has an allergy. Mrs. Eldridge turned to the wall and began to cry softly. Why on the earth? Why is life so unfair? Mom, don't cry, we'll find you a new cat. The son knelt down in front of her. The neighbor's cat has kittened. And they said, you're fat, like to hang about with it.